Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Memphis, Tennessee, this is Keith Anthony Blanchard, and you're listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and Reinforcement, the Transformation Station. I got a couple of announcements before we get down to Center of Light Radio business. Metaphysics returns to Memphis August 5th and 6th at the Agri Center International with Memphis Metaphysical Fair. I'm going to be a part of that. I'm going to be doing some, uh, uh, I'm going to do a live presentation on radical transformation, but also I'm going to have a booth there. So make sure you come and see me. The Memphis Metaphysical Fair will play host to psychic mediums, tarot card readers, crystal and stone healers and vendors, Native American motif, paranormal investigating and 20 workshops over the two days august 5th and 6th agri center international memphis tennessee 10 a.m to 6 p.m ten dollars for one day adult pass and 16 dollars for a weekend pass military discounts are available children under 12 or free workshops range from zero to ten dollars each vending booths are still available visit memphismetaphysical.com for more information. Once again, as I said in the last past a couple of shows, Kenneth Pass was a recent guest on Center of Light Radio. As a child, he went on a camping trip and was abducted by some extraterrestrials, brought back 10,000 years. While he was on this journey, this whatever (laughs) you want to call it, it wasn't all that pleasant for him at first. Um, One of the aliens pissed him off, and so he hid some very powerful technology in Arizona somewhere out there. And Kenneth is trying to raise money to get back to this place so he can find this alien artifact, uh, so he can bring it to the Hopi and the Pueblo. Uh, If you go to centerflightradio.com, you'll see a little flying saucer that flies across the screen. Once it settles, you'll see a donate button. Five, ten bucks, whatever you got. I'm going to get Kenneth out there probably on... Uh, Greyhound, which should cost a couple of three, four hundred dollars so he can have some food and get out there and do his thing. But here's the gig. Once he goes out there on this journey, he's going to come back to Center of Light Radio and tell us all about his findings and what happened in the experience of bringing these uh, this technology back to the elders. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, let's get right down to the show. I, I'm looking forward to talking to my dear sister in spirit, Miss Maria Felipe. So we're going to get down to Center of Light Radio Business. Maria Felipe is the author of Live Your Happy, a Cuban-American born in Miami, as she would say. She is five foot nine with a towering personality to match. Oh, you can bet on that. After experiencing success as a model and actress, including hosting World Wrestling Federation TV shows, she felt called inward and studied to become a reverend at Pathways of Light, an accredited religious school inspired by a course in miracles. She leads monthly services in both Spanish and English at Unity Church in Burbank, California. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, my sister, Maria Felipe. (laughs) Thank you so much. How exciting. I'm so happy to join with you, dear brother. It's been a while, girl. So excited. Well, I promised you when I read your social media post the other day, you know, Maria, I don't know why I don't do this with any of my guests. When... You and I speak on the air, I get filled with intuition as if I'm supposed to hand it to you. I don't know why. I'm not questioning it. But the last two times, <laughs> I was pretty spot on. Well, it wasn't me. It was pretty spot on. The first one was that you were going to travel abroad and do some speaking, and it happened. And you were going to write a book, and it happened. And so you're ready for your new piece of information, dear. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I'm intrigued and I'm scared. <laughs> well, what I kept getting... You're so right on point. You're so right on point. You know? Well, what I, and if you wouldn't, Maria, only because of this last minute uh, technical connection that we have, make sure you're speaking directly into that phone for me. And so when I intuited, when I saw that I was supposed to felt that you were supposed to have a message through me. Um, I didn't want to lean into it too hard because I want it to be live and in the moment and most accurate when I'm out of the way versus thinking about what I think it means and what it is going to impart to you. Uh, But now that I sit here and do it, it is exactly what I felt then. You are going to be one of these, take this in the context it's meant, one of these Oprah Winfrey kind of people, 
one of these figures that's going to move about like a Marion Williamson kind of girl, like a Gabrielle Bernstein kind of girl. This is kind of like, you know, all the things I told you before combined. Now turn the volume up. (laughs) In other words, this window for you is going to expand and is going to be really, really big for you. Seriously, not that uh, you traveling abroad and writing a brand new book that's getting lots of attention is not big enough. What I'm suggesting is that if you can put those both in a sandwich and add some mayo and cheese, it's going to be that big. So I'm happy for you. Be looking for it. Invite it. Accept wow. It. Yeah. Seriously. I, listen, I receive it. I receive it. <laughs> <laughs> so how has life been with this new book cracked open? Well, it feels um, I, I feel like I've had a child, even though I've never had a physical, you know, been a mother, like in that way of like burying like a real life baby. But it feels like I've just given birth um, to consciousness, to truth, to love, to um, an opportunity for this experience we call world to, to have um, insights on what's really true. And I actually have been waking up a lot earlier than I used to, you know, back in the day when I didn't have a book. So it does feel like if I just gave birth to a baby, I wake up anywhere between, every day between 5 and 7, I'm already awake. As before, when I was, didn't have a book, I wake up like around 8 or 9. <laughs> so it's getting me up early. And um, it's been a really beautiful the experience of having people write to me or um, post on social media or have people call me or send me messages of how the book is really, um, you know, helping them or they've been able to have a lot of changes in their lives. Um, It's just really cool to see how the work um, is being truly helpful um, in a very powerful way. Um, And also, I just, I'm I'm just in awe of how it is all just so easy. You know, everything is just very easy and effortless. Um, I love that. I love it. Of, that that is know, a very a big book. sign. That's a very big sign you are on the path is the fact that you laid out the word easy. It's easy. Life is not mm-hmm. difficult, yeah? You know what I always say? I always say easy is normal. <laughs> Dig that. <laughs> so let me you ask know, you this question. Easy quick. is normal. I mean, yeah. Let me ask you this question, darling. What did it feel like when that package arrived at your door and you got a knife or whatever it is you used to open up that box and you saw that book? What did it feel like to be you? Oh, my God. It's so funny because that, that is exactly what I wanted to say before. And I forgot. And I was like, what was I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're so psychic. You're so psychic. I was like, I wanted to say that part. Um, oh, my God. You're so psychic. Um, it was well, I got one book first, and it was actually in the envelope, and I really didn't expect it because the book launch date um, started to just get come earlier and earlier. Um, originally, it was supposed to come out April 22nd, and it ended up coming out April, I think, 16th, so it was a lot earlier. Um, and when I received the package, I kind of had a feeling that it was the book. You know, I felt like, oh, my God, this is the book. And I opened it, and it was surreal. I think it feels like when a mother's going to have a baby or something. I don't know. It's just like, oh, my God, like this is the book. And um, everything, you know, the moments that I had the blank page in my computer and I was thinking of what to write, or the moments that I probably got stuck on a chapter or um, just the moments of editing the book and just going back in time of the whole experience and then seeing the product like manifested in front of me in form, it's um, it's really kooky, you know? A little kooky. <laughs> <laughs> did you cry? <laughs> it's actually a little trippy. It's a little trippy. Um, I did. I did cry. Of course um, you did. I got I got I got I got very emotional and and I was like, Wow, like it's here you know? I think it's it's like you know what it feels like like giving giving birth to something? Um, and then, and, and, and then it's like there in front of you, you know, it's very, very, it's a little trippy. It is a little trippy. Yeah, it's it's giving birth. It's giving birth to a very large aspect of yourself. So now that we've been talking about this book called Live Your Happy, tell us a little bit about this book. And the title. Well, the, yeah, the title. So Live Your Happy is all about 
that's why it says live, you know. Um, I feel that the time has come to really live the principles that I share in the book um, to max capacity without compromise. That means it's a book about living the expression of the principles, which are practicing non-judgment, taking responsibility, understanding you have two thought systems in your mind, fear and love, and they both run you, Um, being present to every day that your source is not outside of you, that your happiness is not outside of you, Um, understanding that nothing outside of you defines you, that you have it all and lack nothing. And it's really every day living that in consciousness without compromise because I feel that there's been a lot of spiritual teachings, and I was in it too, you know, like I would watch, read a lot of self-help books and um, watch, you know, even Marion Williamson or even like watch Oprah, and I was like in self-help desperation, and I would read so many books back in the day, and I would feel good for like one, two, or three days, and then I would be a hot mess the next, you know? It was like a very temporary, and I wanted to write a book that really is inspiring in the sense of it's not speaking to your intellect. It's not speaking to your mind that knows things because we all know that we are love. We all know that we are light and we could, you know, kumbaya and be, you know, affirm it all day long. But I feel that the missing element sometimes is like a real crisp story and to the point message of, okay, fine, you know all this. Now how can you integrate it in your life at max capacity? And so this is a book that speaks more to your heart and more to the consciousness of experience if you're willing to really live this stuff in your life and be willing, you know. So that's why it's called Live Your Happy, because it's more of bringing it into this world, bringing it into the surface of a world, because, you know, this is like a surface, you know. You know, it's like cray-cray, right, crazy. <laughs> so I come with this book so that you can start to live you're happy in this world. So let me ask you this. I understand that the premise of live, you're happy. But even though a person is happy, it doesn't mean that other feelings will begin to surface as you live, you're happy. Some people think happiness is just being happy all the time and negating other feelings. But you can still be under the happy umbrella and live your life and process other feelings. Yes, aren't those feelings important? Yes, they are. Actually, feeling your feelings um, is an integral part of happiness. And I love how you worded it, which is like under the umbrella of happiness. That's really cool because I hadn't heard it expressed that way. And that is right on because I think a lot of people think that you know, happiness is like, ah, oh, pretending to be happy and brush things under the rug and pretend. No, that's not the happiness that I'm talking about. I'm actually talking about a real, a real, real happiness, which takes something and it actually takes feeling your feelings. And within feeling that feeling, whatever that feeling is, it could be sadness, it could be anxiety, it could be um, depression, it could be worry, fear. You can feel all those feelings and within the feeling is the awakening. Because you need to uncover those thought clusters so that way they can be revealed fully because the ego is vicious and doesn't want you to heal, doesn't want you to see those feelings because it knows that you will heal. And then what you do with those feelings is that you transform them by your inner teacher, which I call Holy Spirit, and you can say, you know, your best friend, your inner friend, intuition, whatever word resonates with you, and you transform those feelings. And within that, that will bring you back to your happy. So absolutely, feeling your feelings is under the happy umbrella. And I actually like that. I'm going to start using that. I really like that. So you said that. Uh, just send the royalties to 1287 Heist and Place Memphis. <laughs> 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 How you been, girl? I miss you. You're doing well? You happy? Everything's wonderful, yeah? Oh, I miss you, too. Yes, yeah, everything's it's been really a while. I actually, just, I actually just got engaged about a week ago. I saw that. Ooh. Um, yeah, I got engaged about a week ago, and then I got—I also got married this past Saturday. So, <laughs> so you're a married woman now. <laughs> yeah, I am a married woman. Now. I have to be yeah. careful with my uh, terms of endearment. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, I, I, a couple of years ago, or the last—I think it was the last time. And it, when it's been a while, maybe the time before that, when you were when we were interviewing, uh, I, I gave a brief overview that you know I think there's a book in you, and it might surface, but. Didn't the 
final push for Live Your Happy, your new book that was just released. Uh, how did this come about? Well, didn't this get uh, reinforced by a Facebook post? Yes? Yes, it did. Actually, um, I had written um, a I had written a post on Facebook that I thought sounded good for a book. And I wrote excerpts from a book, my book. And I didn't really have a book. I just thought it would sound good in a book. And um, I was actually having Pinot Noir that night because I like wine. And I had like two glasses of Pinot Noir and I posted that. And then the next day, D. Patrick Miller, which was the original publisher of Disappearance of the Universe, that now Hay House publishes, they sold the rights to them. Um, he contacted me and said, hey, you know, I get very interested when Course in Miracles teachers are talking about, you know, are, are writing a book. And I'm interested in your book. And then I was like, what is he talking about? And then I looked back and I saw that I wrote that thing in my Facebook that I had a book. And I was like, oh, my God, the Pinot Noir was talking, you know. So I always say, don't, don't <laughs> post while drinking. Don't post while drinking. But in this case, it was good that I posted while drinking. <laughs> so I was so embarrassed that I didn't write him back. Like on Facebook, I was like, oh, my God, I don't have a book. Like, forget about it. Maybe he'll just forget about it. And then he emailed me, he sent me a private email and said, hey, Maria, I sent you a Facebook message. I want to know about your book. And I was like, oh, my God, I don't have a book. You know, I didn't. So I just wrote to him. I said, listen, Patrick, I'm sorry. You know, I was on Facebook. And the truth is I haven't gotten in touch with you because I'm very embarrassed because I don't have a book. I was actually having having a really nice night, and I drank a little way too much Pinot Noir, and I just put that on Facebook. <laughs> So then, um, so then he told me, well, you know, to make a long story short, he told me that I did have a message within me that he's been watching my videos and that my message is about happiness. And I didn't know that. I go, what do you mean? He's like, yes, Mary, every other word out of you is always happy this and happy that. And I think that you, you, that's like your niche. And I was like, really? So that's how it started. He, I told him I didn't feel comfortable. I told him that I felt I wasn't ready to write a book. I felt um, insecure, you know, I don't feel I'm good with grammar. I had dyslexia when I was young and I still have dyslexia. I don't like reading. I don't like writing. Like all the things to be a writer, I didn't have them. And I didn't want to write a book actually at that time. <laughs> and, um, he said to me, well, you know what, you know, you know how it is. We're very intuitive people. We you know we're, we're highly sensitive. And I feel that we know that when we have a purpose, angels and people and things will come into your life, even aliens, right. To help you reach Whatever that purpose is, you know, spirit's going to use all these symbols. And in this case, used Patrick to give me comfort to, in a real gentle and loving way and said, listen, Maria, I'll help you. I'll do a book proposal and we'll submit it to Hay House because I feel that like you're a Hay House writer and, and see what happens. And guess what? You're not going to have to write the whole book. You just write the introduction and the idea of the book. And actually, it was very, very easy for me. And I think it was very easy because he was very comforting. And he has really good grammar, and he edited my book, so he makes me sound really good, you know? Um, <laughs> so we, we, we turned it into Hay House in December, uh, not this year, but the past year, and um, they, they denied the book. And I was so okay with it. It was so funny because since, I, since I've never defined myself as a writer, I've never made it, like, never made it matter that that it was such an easy process because I didn't get writer's block or anything because I didn't care. It was just very easy. So when, when Hay House said no, I was like, okay, fine. And then he's like, well, how come you're okay with that? And I go, well, first of all, the book doesn't define me. God does. Second of all, the, you know, it's, I don't want the book to be where it's not supposed to be. So let's try again next year. And he says, yeah, let's try again in the first of the year and I'll send it out again. And he sent out um, about two, five other publishers and I got, and I got two offers. I got two offers. And then I went with New World Library, which, which was the one that published my book. But um, that's how it happened. It happened by Pinot Noir and Facebook. <laughs> did you give Pinot Noir uh, a credit? <laughs> I did, actually, in my acknowledgement. I acknowledged Pinot Noir and Facebook, actually. I, I, I'll, I'll read that to you later. But, yeah, literally in the acknowledgement, the first thing that I say, let me see if it's here. I, that's the first thing I write. It's, um, thank you, Pinot Noir, and thank you, Facebook. Oh, here it is. First, I would like to acknowledge myself. Okay, so I acknowledge myself, actually. <laughs> first, I would like to acknowledge myself for getting out of my own way and writing this book after suffering from dyslexia, having insecurities about grammar, and never, ever believing I would write a book. So here's to the Pinot Noir post on Facebook that led to all this happening. So that's how I start my, my acknowledgments. 
You know, like you, I maybe differently, but like you, I had a lot of grammatical English typing challenges. You know, I've really. Yo, know, absolutely. Oh, I, I was. I failed English huh. two four times in school as to why I dropped out of school. I failed typing twice, and <laughs> and these are the things we wow. need to write a, a good book. And so, but all that being said, you know, when you said that you pitched your book was pitched to Hay House and they declined it, and the gentleman said, you know, why this is why is this not affecting you the way he assumed it would? Well, because if that was the case, then you truly wouldn't be the author that you are because you would not be living your happy by letting outside circumstances dictate to you who you are, which is the author of Living Your Happy. So in your book, you a lot of the work resounds, resonates, shakes hands with the messages and the inspiration of Course in Miracles. Um, can you explain what A Course in Miracles is for those who may not know about this particular beautiful, in my opinion, it's a piece of scripture? Yes, um, Course in Miracles is actually... Um, it's actually a blue book, if you see it. It's blue. Now it's in different colors because there's different people I published it. But it's a book that was published in 19, actually 1976, which is actually the year I was born, um, by Helen Shuckman and Bill Thefford. They were two psychologists in New York, and they didn't get along. And there was a moment that um, Helen Shuckman said, you know, there must be another way. And supposedly this is channeled through Jesus, um, this material. And, you know, a lot of people ask me if that's true or not, and, and I, I wouldn't, I mean, I don't know, for me it's true, it's true. Um, but that's not what I focus on. I focus more on that. If, if it's true that Jesus wrote it or not is not my issue. Yeah, it's what really it not is, important. Is, is, that it, is that it works. Is that it works. And what the Course in Miracles does is it helps you have a relationship with your internal teacher, which is Holy Spirit. Um, it's the voice of love that's in your mind. It's the voice of forgiveness. It's the voice that leads you back to the mind of God, which is never left. And we've never left the mind of God, which is that oneness. People could call it universe source, love, light, that eternal space. That space that's within the mind, the Holy Spirit reminds us that we've never left. So regardless of what's going on in form, we will always be at peace and happy because if we're cultivating the voice of Holy Spirit in our minds, nothing outside of us can trans you out. So really the Course in Miracles helps you to discern the two voices in your mind, which are either fear or love. Fear is the, op- is the opposite. You know, fear is that part of your mind that's judgmental. Um, whole, you know, which is the ego voice. So the ego voice is about all oh, the should have, I could have, I wish I would have done it better. It's, it's, you know, it's the voice that thinks about the past and the future. Um, it's manipulative. It likes to make things happen and push things and force things as of the spirit of Holy Spirit in your mind is more about trust and more of allowing, um, being filled with wonder. Um, you, you know where to go. You know what to do. Everything is just, you, you live a life of just like a little child, like an innocence, like, okay. And you let each moment be revealed to you. And it's not that you don't do stuff, you know, as an author, you know, I've had to technically do things, you know, like book launch parties, book tours, um, um, you know, uh, I don't know, special offers or whatever it is, or interviews like this one. So I'm constantly, what it appears I'm doing stuff in the world. But I always, I'm very, very cautious, and I understand that no healing happens in behavior, because happiness doesn't come from behavior. It comes from your mind, from your thoughts. So the Course of Miracles helps you to discern your thoughts and to, and to choose more your right mind, choose more thoughts aligned to, to love. And that takes something. It takes really stopping yourself and, and really being vigilant of your mind. I feel that most of us in this world that we're experiencing, this consciousness of world we're experiencing, have no idea about the two thought systems in our mind, and we let the ego have its way with us every day, transing, transing us out and believing that our form and our source is outside of us, and that our happiness depends on out, outside sources. So what the Course helps you do is understand that you lack nothing and have everything right now. You, me, I would say pretty much all people in the spiritual way, we understand taking 100% responsibility. 100% responsibility. Other people will say, when we offer them this model to implement this in their life, because the idea is that when you take this responsibility and claim all of it, you are now sitting in the seat of 100% power and is the one that is left 
to ensure that such a situation could never happen to you again by claiming responsibility. But some people will say, yeah, but Keith, you don't understand because this person did this to me yesterday and da, 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 da. So can you give me your insight about taking responsibility versus playing the victim role? <laughs> First of all, I want to say, woohoo, hallelujah, yes, yes. I get so inspired <laughs> when you say that. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, I love, when you're saying that, I felt like a cheerleader, like jumping up and down, like, yes, 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 because absolutely, like, taking responsibility in that statement that you made, you get so much power, like, you're so empowered, and it's not a power that comes from ego. That's the most beautiful part of it, because the world could get confused of what's the ego, like powerful, like me, 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 consciousness is all about me, and I'm so powerful. But the power that you get from taking responsibility is so much more powerful, and it's true power, because nothing outside of you could hurt you. Nothing outside of you can take away your peace. Nothing outside of you could take away that gentle smile that you're so worthy of having on your face, you know? And I feel that Taking responsibility, you can't be a victim of the world that you see, like you were saying. So then, guess what happens? Then you don't you suffer less. Because if so-and-so didn't play the role that you assigned them, because that's what we do, we assign roles to people of how they Yes, we be. do. We do exactly that. If we, if we don't do that, you know, then guess what happens? We don't suffer because then we are not a victim of them, of that situation. We're not a victim of our boss telling us, you know, our, our, our job is over or, or your spouse saying they're going to leave you or, or maybe anything. And you, you're not a victim of that anymore because you're completely responsible. And this is what we're responsible for, our experience of it. Because what's going to happen in the world is going to happen. Because we live in a world of separation. We live in a world of duality, of fragmentation. So there is going to be death in the family. There is going to be, um, you know, accidents. There is going to be health issues because that's what this world of duality that we've chosen to be in, our experience. So what can we do? As beings in this realm, we, it's just so powerful that we could be responsible because we get to choose our experience. Okay, you're going to be dealt these certain cards, a certain contract that your soul, your spirit has chosen. And guess what? You get to experience it through love or fear. And depending what perception you're going to have, you're either going to go straight to heaven or straight to hell right here, right now. It's not going to be somewhere you're going to go to later. I mean, <laughs> haven't, you felt like you're, <laughs> haven't you felt sometimes like you're in hell? I have. Yeah. In this world. <laughs> I felt like I'm in freaking hell. You know, you know I've, I've, I've always said that hell is your life going wrong, no matter where you are. Exactly. And it's, <laughs> it's, like the, the, it's depending on your thoughts of how you're choosing to experience anything that's in front of you, you're going to experience either heaven or hell. And it's up to you. And that's so powerful because guess who's in charge? You are. And, you know, we, and we feel that thought by, choice by choice, thought by thought, feeling by feeling. We can either feel the bliss of a heavenly state of being or the hell of our life just gone awry. Maria, we at the bottom of the hour. Would you give out your contact information, how they can find you, uh, purchase your book, and anything else that you would like our listening audience to know about you? Absolutely. Thank you for, for that. Um, so my website is mariafelipe.org. MariaFelipe.org, which actually there you can um, get a book offer that I have. So if you go to new book tab, um, there's um, a free, uh, if you pre-order, the, if you get the book, you get a free um, retreat video that's actually based on the book, a video I shot last year in Costa Rica. And also the book right now is 30% off. Um, and yeah, that's how people can get it. It's actually available in Barnes and & Nobles and Amazon and, and any bookstore. If anybody goes into their local bookstore, they can order it. Um, so yeah, it's very, it's, it's very accessible. And on YouTube, you can just go to Maria Coconut TV and you, you have over, over 200 videos on there, um, based on happiness as well as my book trailers on there and a video I just did recently, which is your four steps to happiness, um, is on there too. So, so yeah, that's how people can find me through MariaFelipe.org. 
Keith Anthony Blanchard here with Center of Light Radio to remind you about my lifelong work, RPM, Recognize, Plug In, and Manifest Your Life. Let me ask you a few questions. What is it you want out of your life? You want more financial stability? You want relationship? You want greater degrees of bliss, conscious expansion, and spiritual evolvement? These are magnificent, wonderful things, and I have achieved all of these by implementing what I am offering to you so you can apply this to your life so you can have all those things that you truly desire and truly deserve. I absolutely guarantee my work 100%. Go to Center of Light Radio, look at the opening page, the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Not only will you receive my awesome Power Pack newsletter monthly, but you will have access to my RPM program. Stay in touch with me, and I will send you everything I'm about, all my successful works. You can bet. All you have to do is contact me, Keith Anthony Blanchard at gmail.com. Peace, love, and light to you always. How can we begin to face those big things in life, those big deals that sometimes are really just small potatoes and people just blow them up as if they're hot potatoes? You know, how can people begin to have the courage to face them, I guess? Well, the big deals in my book, I actually made it that name because we do make them big. Um, they're really problems. So big deals, the big deals in my book, that you know, it would, the definition of that would be problems, worldly problems. So the big deal would be IRS. Maybe you get an IRS level, letter or, you know, that you have a fine or you're being audited. Or another big deal is you could be in line for your license and there's a long line. That's another big deal. Or maybe you're driving, you know, and you get a ticket, you know, or yeah, that's a big deal. So the ego would have its way with you, with, with transing you out with this, these big deals. And what I say in my book is to be very vigilant of what you're doing. So what's going to give you the anxiety of that problem? The anxiety is going to come up, the meaning you're giving it, and projecting in the future. Because right away, let's say you receive a letter in the mail that doesn't have good news. You're already going to the future of what's happening, which hasn't even happened yet, and you don't know if it is. So instead of freaking out about the letter, you'd be present to the letter and not make it mean anything. It's just a letter. It's just a paper. It has words. It has a signature, and that's about it. There's nothing else there right, right at that moment. And you invite Spirit in, Holy Spirit, let me see this letter through your eyes. And you start to just be really present that why are you going to give away your power to the stupid letter with the stupid message, you know? <laughs> You know, that, that that you say that, and I loved your idea and how you presented that. That's sort of like money. Money is just a piece of paper and metal disc. We can look anywhere in our house and find metal and paper. And so money in this regard is the meaning we assign to it. And so these big deals or is, this, is the same idea of money. It's what we assign it. So that being said, let me ask you this question, Maria. For example, are you saying, let's say something big happened, something really big happened in one's life, and it's overwhelming, and it, it can overwhelm anyone. Do you think that because of the size and the, the enormity of the big deal, that if we process it correctly and handle it, to use the word correctly, that the re reward the bang can be equally as big if we handle it correctly? Um, yes, absolutely. I mean, and, and I, don't know if, I don't know if it's handling it correctly. You know, I think it's more of just handling it. You know, um, I, I think also the big deal, they're all the same. I have to say that, you know, the Course in Miracles talks about this. Like, all the big deals are the same. All the problems are the same. They just appear in category that one is bigger than the other. But at the end of the day, problems are problems, and they all come fear from fear. Um, there's no real, like, oh, my God, like, and, and I know this is pretty radical, but, you know, a lot of people would think, like, a bigger deal is somebody passing, like having a death in the family, versus having a letter in the mail that you got to take it, right? So the death in the family would be more. But in, in, in this case, of course, the miracles and where I'm up to and the teachings that I'm up to in my life, is that it's really the same thing. And I know in form it looks completely radical, like if somebody passes away and you get a ticket, but underneath, underneath it, it's a lot, there's fear of the way you're going to handle it. And depending on how you're going to see it, it's going to give you the experience of that big deal. Now, the reason it's a similar big deal is because they're, they're, you could choose to experience them through fear versus love. 
So in this case, that problem or that situation could bring you closer to God or make you part or, or separate you more from the mind of God. So that death in the family, you could actually use it to transcend, to transform, to have a revelation, to have a mystical experience, to be able to come back to truth. That that death in the family, the way that you perceive it um, or choose to perceive it, could bring you back home to the mind of God by not being a victim of it, not, you know, you could be sad, of course. I mean, you're not going to be sad if they have a death in the family. My mom would pass away tomorrow. I would be extremely sad. But my job is to hold my mom in Christ's vision and hold her in high regard that no matter what, she's not a body. She's pure spirit, you know? And I, and I hold her in high regard. And that, that experience, when I, when I choose to remember her truth, I come back to remember my mind in God. Now, when I look at a ticket and I realize that that ticket is not my power, I'm also remembering that I'm in the mind of God. So they're both very similar instances in the sense of the problem and, and how we're going to deal with it. Every, every problem and every big deal in the world has only one purpose, and that's to give you the opportunity to remember who you are in truth and to remember that you never left the mind of love, period. That's what problems are for. That's their purpose, really, in our lives. We can use it as tools to come back to truth. And that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely it's so radical. Right, it's right. very radical. It's radical, absolutely. What is the cuckoo voice of the ego, and how can we avoid falling into the trap of the cuckoo voice? <laughs> I love it. The cuckoo voice is the ego voice, which is the voice of fear <laughs> that I talked about earlier. And, and it thinks a lot of caca. A lot of caca thoughts. So I call the thoughts that they're caca thoughts. And I don't know, I don't know if you know what well, caca is. Caca is shit. <laughs> so, the cuckoo, so the cuckoo voice says a lot of caca. You know, like the cuckoo voice is the voice that tells you that you're not good enough. The cuckoo voice is the voice that um, continues to be a victim of the world that it sees. The cuckoo voice would tell you that your source is outside of you, that what's outside of you defines you. You know, the cuckoo voice is that part of the mind that makes you believe that you're separate, that the cuckoo voice is what makes you not want to take responsibility, which is what we were talking about earlier. And that's why I call it cuckoo, because it's cuckoo for cocoa puff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have, a, I have a, a similar picture. I call it the monkey mind. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Uh, you know, we see the devil... In the angel on our shoulders, right? We know the devil's devilish, but are we absolutely sure that the angel on the other shoulder is not the same devil in disguise? Because if they're both griping at you, they both are, quote, incorrect choices. Yeah, it's true. Absolutely true. Yeah, and I, again, it's so beautiful because we have the other voice, which is the voice of love that, that was the answer to the ego. The Course says that when, the, when we decided to separate from God and now we're in this fragmented wor- world, there was the ego, and then the Holy Spirit is the answer to the ego. So that's why in my book I talk very, very a lot about the inner voice of Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit voice is what's going to help you remember what is true and help you change your mind, because it's going to meet you where you're at, so you can undo the voice of fear in your mind. And that takes practice. It takes practice because the ego speaks first and speaks the loudest. And the ego is so vicious. It's so nasty that that's why it's important to be very vigilant of your thoughts so you could stop yourself and think thoughts that are aligned to love. You say that we have to be ready to be happy. What do you mean by that? I mean, how does one posture position themselves to begin to have an open hand, have an open heart, an open mind to be able to take in not only the idea, but the energy or the life the river of life that allows one to be happy. So what do you mean by one has to be ready to be happy? Well, when I mean that somebody needs to be ready to be happy, it means that you need to be willing. So the Course says all you need is a little bit of willingness and miracles happen. So that's what I'm saying here. I'm saying, and I, and I actually say big willingness. It's interesting because I say big willingness. And the reason I say big willingness, that's, the, that's how you get ready. It's first saying, you know what, I am willing, but not willing just like willing. It's like I am I have I have massive big willingness because I am tired. And I feel that what happens is is that 
people who aren't, they think they're ready, or because I have been there. Like this comes from personal experience. So I thought I was ready. I thought that I was ready to step in my greatness. I thought that I was ready to finally let go of my fears and to live a life of happiness and to not cry as often as I used to. Like I thought that I was ready to do that, and and I wasn't because I didn't have big willingness. I I wanted to be happy, but I still wanted to compromise it. I still wanted to find my love outside of myself and a partner or to find one of my careers and access and, 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 or, or my source be money. So, yeah, I wanted to be happy and stuff, but I still wanted the world to define me. I still believe that the source of my happiness came from outside me. So I needed to come into alignment. So before it was like, I am love, but I'm going to look for love outside of myself. You know, I am abundant, but I'm going to worry about money outside, right? So that's what, that was inconsistent. But when I stepped into going to ministerial school at Pathways of Light and I started the journey of becoming a spiritual teacher, I started to recognize that the reason I was suffering so much is because I wasn't living the principles. That's why it's called live your happy. I wasn't living it at max capacity. I was compromising it. So I had to get into I am love, I am love. Period. Like, and what does that mean? If I am love, then I'm not looking for my love outside of myself. What thoughts am I having? What thoughts of love am I having within my mind about myself? What thoughts of love am I having about some of anyone else that appears to be outside of me? So I feel that to get ready, you need to be ready to live happy without compromise. What does that mean? Non-judgment. Being responsible not being a victim of the world that you see. Also, you know, just saying, you know what, like, I'm done. Like, I feel like sometimes we're just not done with the suffering. Like, we're just so used to it. We're so turned out by, like, we're so used to being fearful. It's like, that's, that's our normal thing. And I, to be ready, you have to be like, okay, like, I'm done. Like, I'm ready to leave this baggage. I'm ready to, like, let go of this baggage with the help of Holy Spirit so I can be happy. And you need to be willing to forgive, even if you don't want to. This is the issue here. It's like, we want to forgive, but not really, you know? I have had to forgive, and I've had to be, and I've had to be responsible, and I have had to look and feel past relationships, and it hasn't been fun. It hasn't been fun. But it's, I get to live now. I get to really live versus die. So I feel like you need to step into this without compromise, and that takes something. It takes big willingness to look at your stuff. It's very uncomfortable to go back in time. I had to go back in time and heal my relationship, talk about it in my book, heal my relationship with my father, and my father that killed himself himself when I was three months old. I had to go all the way back in time and, and go back to those abandonment issues and also forgive other men that have been in my life and relationships I've had and my ex husband and do you th- it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun to go back in time and feel those feelings and forgive these people in my life. I wanted to do it because I'm tired. I didn't want to compromise my happiness anymore. I didn't want to compromise my self-love anymore that I'm so worthy of. Like, I'm so worthy of, of experiencing, you know, love to max, to max capacity. I'm so worthy of understanding that I am abundant. And abundance in my book actually is not abundance of money. It's actually abundance is recognizing that you are God created you. You are love, period. So I, how you get ready is by really stepping into that truth and really having cojones, you know, balls, and really make it happen. Like, no, there's no more playing around anymore. You know, this is like the Olympics now. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm on fire. That's a great analogy. You know, I've always said, Marie, I've always said that, I've always said that, and that was a great analogy about the, you know, this is the Olympics now. Put on your big boy, your big girl pants. I've always said that willingness is the halfway point. Because if you don't, if you're not willing, nothing is going to launch off the ground, not a thing. Recognizing, acknowledging something is the halfway point. Now, all that is left is to do the work and to go, oh, my God, Keith, that's where the real work begins. No, that's where your liberation begins. You know, change the mindset from work. Because when you start making these kinds of principles applied into your life fun, then they begin to exponentiate the the, the results of what happens in, quote, the outside world. Though we are internally referenced, we still live in a world that the outside reflects to us as a sounding board of our our successes, our progress of how we're doing internally. So I've always said that willingness is a halfway point. Yes, it, it is a halfway point. I love how you said practice because that's like 
the most important thing is, is, is then putting it into practice, like saying, okay, I am willing. Now I'm willing to do whatever needs to be done in my experience, you know, to be able to, this, to come into fruition. And, and, and the first thing that takes place is in your mind. Because that's the only place that the change takes place is in your mind, not in the world. So when you're willing, it would be, I am willing to finally discern and choose love in my mind, period. No matter what's going on in form, because the key here is to be happy and peaceful regardless of what's going on in form. And I mean that li- like literally, not like, ha- you know, halfway, like it's really true, like no matter what's going on the work is for it to not to rattle you because it's been rattling you for way too long like we're a society that has been so fear driven for what it it appears like ions and eons or whatever of time you know that i I, I'm, i'm what i'm saying here is how about the opposite of that how about the radical opposite of that like we've been run by fear for so long how about the opposite of that how about it like I said earlier, easy is normal. How about if love is normal? How about if this this whole experience of life Miracles could are be the opposite? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's just been so long. It's just been so long. It's riddled with fear and fear that I'm like, how about another conversation now? You know, how about if it could be completely upside down? And I, I have people ask me, you know, Maria, can you be happy all the time? Like, do you believe that happiness is something that could be all the time? Yeah, I do. I really do. And I think that that is normal thinking that getting closer to thinking that way is very radical. Because people are like, oh, yeah, how could that be? That's the problem. We don't believe that it could be, but it can. Totally it can. You know, you may have a mood shift, but overall, under the happy umbrella, it doesn't mean you're not happy just because you're having a mood because, you know, you stubbed your toe and it hurts like God knows what. Or... (laughs) Uh, totally. I, I totally get it. So, Marie, we talked about a lot of different ideas about, you know, just be happy and for no reason, don't let the outside world influence you. But how would you say that someone could begin in that process? One, I would suggest get out of the cuckoo mind, the cuckoo voice or the ooh, ooh, ah, ah, monkey mind. Basically, just <laughs> stop, 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 stop it all. Just stop it. Stop it. Step back from the dynamic of life of what you think is happening. Stop projecting what you think is happening. Step back as if you would be a ghost who cannot participate with the temporal world. You can only observe it. Now, of course, it's your life. Participate with the world. But when you can take that step back position and just watch, it all gets... You know, people say, well, it's, it sounds hard. No, it's not hard. That's the thing. Like, like Maria, like you said, it's the opposite of all that. It's not hard. It's actually more simple than it is difficult. And it requires one person stopping the dynamic of all that stuff that's going on in the brain. Yeah, that person is you, you know? <laughs> so it points right back at you. And I like that you said that, because stop it, stop it, stop it. Yeah, exactly. You stop it. And then the next step is, you give it over. Like, when I'm, when I'm being run by the cuckoo mind, you know, the monkey mind, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, I love that you say that. You're too cute. Um, I just, I want <laughs> to, I stop, my, I, I stop myself, and what I do is, is that I sit, I, sit, I sit with myself, and I just give it all over. I give all of my thoughts over. I feel them. I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, you know, and whatever word resonates for each person that's, that's listening on the call, but it's like, Holy Spirit, I give you these thoughts. I give you this sadness I'm feeling right now. I give you this insecurity I'm feeling right now. I give you this moment that I'm feeling like I'm not worthy of love, this moment that I'm feeling, um, you know, scared because of money or whatever it is. And I sit down with Spirit, and I really just give my thoughts over. And I open my mind, every single crevice, every single people, every single door, every single window. Like, I don't, I, I, I make the commitment to not leave any thought behind, no matter how disgusting it is. I'm going to give it over to spirit. And the more gross it is, the more, the more I'm going to give it over. And I'm going to expose all the thoughts because the ego is vicious. The ego it doesn't want to be exposed. The ego doesn't want the thoughts to be exposed because it knows you're going to heal them. So I just get really honest with my thoughts and what I'm going through. And then generally, spirit is, I feel spirit's hug. I feel spirit's 
observe, you know, observing it with me. And it's always okay. It's like, it's okay. You're fearful right now. And it's okay that you're fearful. Don't judge yourself because you're fearful. It's exactly perfect. And I love you. And don't worry about it. I know that this is the grievance you've had for a long time. But guess what? I'm here for you. And I'm going to help you transform it. And usually, you know, what's going to happen is that you're going to get insight from spirit. And I do. And spirit will say, you know what? You've been thinking like this all along but guess what right now you're suffering because you're thinking that this person can make you happy or you're suffering right now because you think that if you have this in your life then you're going to be complete but the truth is you're already complete you're complete in god (laughs) you're you already have you already have everything and lack nothing and and that's what we do we work at everything by giving giving it over so we can have another experience of it yeah, but people will look at you and me and think that, are you crazy? I'm in this dynamic right now, and if I pry my hands off of it, it's going to go twice as a ride because I'm not trying to control it, right? Because, you know, this is happening. And if I just step back and walk away, this is really going to get way out of shape. And so what do you suggest that people do? I mean, how do, how do they pry their hands off of it? How do suggest you know they let go what is the mechanism what is the choice that actually lets them say okay i'm letting go they like the idea of letting go but how do they actually do it oh my god that's so funny first of all the first thing that came into my mind when you're talking about like how people like to manipulate and want to stick their hands in it the first thing i said is good luck with that you know i was thinking good luck with that (laughs) because i've been there and i've done that and it's and it's not fun um, how they do that is, is again, we go back to, you do it because you're tired, you know, you do it because you understand that it doesn't work anymore. Like that way doesn't work. Yeah. I know I've also done it. It doesn't work. You start to realize that you've been living in hell for so long and what you're doing is not working by manipulating, by trying to push, by trying to make it happen. It's not working. And you know, because many, many times you have felt that you're in hell. So what it is, is inside being willing to pop but there's possibly other opportunities, other options, other ways of thinking, other ways of being that are, that are different from that fear thinking. And how you do that is, I get it that not everybody could sit and have a mystical experience or revelations like, like, like you know, that I, that I do because it's hard to quiet your mind. Maybe you're at work and you can't step away and have like this whole conversation with Holy Spirit. I get that. But what happens is, is that when you start to cultivate this, this relationship and, and this inner muscular turn, your mind of Holy Spirit, of, of that voice of truth in your mind starts to get stronger and stronger, what happens is, is that in your daily life, you will, you'll be quick to catch your thoughts because you're discerning and you're aware of your thoughts, and you'll stop yourself and come back to a truth, truth, truth thought, and it's not going to take any work at all when you understand the way your mind works. So if you're driving and you have a thought of scarcity for a second, oh my God, I'm scared because I'm going to go on this job interview right now. You just change your thought and you'll be like, wait a second, I'm fearful right now. The truth is, is that I'm being trusting. Like this is all going to unfold perfectly. So it's just constantly, constantly just changing your thoughts in your mind. um, And that's what's going to be helpful. I love it. Maria, we happen to be at the top of the hour. Give me a quick thought on what would you like people to take away from your book, Live Your Happy? What is the one thing, if there was just one thing that they would take with them, what would that be, dear? Well, basically that nothing outside of you is going to make you happy. You know, the relationship is not going to make you happy. Ultimately, you know, it's just going to be passive, you know, temporary happiness. Um, You know, you're a child getting married, whatever it is. Even now that I got married, that's not going to make me happy. Even the book, my book is not going to make you happy because your happiness doesn't come from anything outside of you. It's already yours. It's your inheritance. It's your divine right. It's where you come from. It's where you've never left. It's, It's yours. So if I can say anything, it's that. It's to remember that there's nothing outside of you that can make you happy because you have everything now and you lack nothing. And when you understand that, you will be definitely living your happy. Maria, thank you for coming back to uh, Center of Light Radio and being a phenomenal guest. You're always welcome here. Mm-hmm. Congrats on this awesome new book. Congrats on the uh, prediction I sent to you in, uh, about birthing. You might want to listen to that word. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so oh let's let's just say that you're impregnated oh with a God, lots of uh, a future, <laughs> lots of future coming to you. Thank you, dear. You're always welcome here. You know that. Oh, thank you so much. You are such a light, and <laughs> I was just thinking of when you were speaking that you're such an amazing teacher. Really, you really, you know, you really bless us so much, Ken. And not only with who you're being, but your voice. You know, your sexy voice. I love it. Well, thank you, dear. <laughs> I appreciate you. Great love and light to you. You too. Love you. Bye bye.
everyone, Maria Felipe, you can find it mariafelipe.org. That's Maria Felipe, F-E-L-I-P-E dot org. Next week on Center of Light Radio, I have a powerhouse, a very illumined lady by the name of Glendis Morales. She wowed the crap out of me the last time she was here. Uh, final announcement. Metaphysics returns to Memphis August 5th and 6th at the Agri, in, Agri Center International with Memphis' Metaphysical Fair. That's going to be August 5th and 6th. Um, the doors open at 10 a.m. in the morning and it lasts till 6 p.m. If you want more information, you can always contact me at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. I'll send you everything about this. There's going to be all kinds of vending booths, everything from psychics to tarot card, uh, Indian motifs, and there's going to be stones and jewels, um, vending booths, as well as workshops that range from free all the way to $10. So um, that's going to be August 5th and 6th. I look forward to seeing you on Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. What better way to start off your week and come hang out with me at Center of Light Radio. I look forward to seeing you soon. Peace, love, and light to you. And always remember to ease into bliss. Thank you.